In this video, we're going to be looking at a question from the Maths Leave Insert Paper 2 from 2022. You'll find some timestamps below the video if you want to skip to a specific question. And also, if you want to go to a different question that I'm covering in this video, check out the playlist that you should find a link for in the description below. And this is question three. This question is going to be all about statistics. Um, we have, we're going to be dealing with averages, means, medians, and a bit of counting in part B of the question. Part A of the question gives us these numbers, these seven numbers, and they simply ask us to find the mean. Now, what you could do is you could put it, uh, use a calculator and go to the statistics part of your calculator, put these numbers in. It, it is something you need to learn. Um, I think question four in this exam, you needed to do that. Well, actually you never need to use calculator. You could do it by hand, but it would have been a lot di more difficult in the next part. This one you can do by hand. Add all these numbers up, divide it by seven. If you add them all up, you would get uh, 95. Divide it by seven, put that in a calculator and you get uh, 13.5714. The exam asks you to give this to one decimal place. So uh, we'll say it's approximately equal to one decimal place, this five here. So what I do is I look at the next number, seven or 57 maybe. Is this closer to uh, 60 or to 50? Well, it's closer to 60. So we'll put in 13.6. That's the one decimal place. All right, part two of this question same numbers up here they ask us to find the median so to do that we need to put these in order um, I'll use my notes again 8 8 9 11 14 17 and 28 I'll put that write that up here again with the magic of editing you don't have to watch me write that and the median is simply the middle number there's seven numbers here and uh, one way I, you can do it is you can divide seven by two to get the middle, that's three and a half, and we have to we have to add a half to that. Um, I, or another way to think of it is, we have seven here. Add one, divide that by two, we get four. The fourth number. the The reason that doesn't work out, by the way, is because we count weird. We go one, two, three, four. Really, we should say zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. But anyway, uh, however you find it, you could also just, just simply go first, last, second, last, until we're left with the middle number. Anyway, the median is simply the middle number. When there's only one, the answer is 11. When there's two numbers in the middle, which we will see in part three, we need to get the mean of those two numbers. Okay, let's skip to part three. So part three asks about the median again, except this time they're gonna in, uh, input a number somewhere on this list. And we're gonna find the median to be 10.5 now. So what's the number and where does it go? What you could do is you could just play around putting numbers. Maybe put a number at the start, you'd find the middle is now nine and, nine and 11. The median of nine and 11 is 10, so that won't work. Number at the end, you find the median is 11 and 14. Um, that's not gonna work, that's 12, 12 and a half would be the, the median, so that's not gonna work. So the number has to be beside 11 somewhere. Or another way to think of this, I'm gonna use a little algebra, although you can probably work it out yourself in your head. I'm gonna use a little algebra and say 11 plus some number, it's gonna be beside it, maybe it's a number be in front of it or behind it, we can figure out which it is, 10 and a half. A number with 11 must be smaller. In fact, we should be able to think in our head it's 10, but I'll do it slowly again. 11 plus some number beside it, x, divided by two, again the median of it, must equal 10.5. We work this out by algebra, we get rid of the two, multiply both sides by two, we get 11 plus x is equal, times two, 21. Take 11 from both sides, that disappears. Uh, 21 minus 11 is 10. 10, must, 10 is the only number that when it joins with 11 will give us 10 and a half. So the missing number must be 10. So we go ahead and squeeze that in there. That's it, that's, where, that's the missing number and that's where it goes. 
Okay, part B is a counting question. Counting always sounds so simple, but then you see the questions, you're like, oh, counting's not simple anymore when we get some big numbers. So we have, a, I guess, a group of a subjects. So this might be common issue in a school. You have to pick a, a language. You have to pick, um, I guess, usually a science but with businesses in here. And you have to pick some extra subjects as well. So this student needs to pick one from each group. Although in real life, it's, it's and in an honors question, they'd probably ask you to pick one from this, two from this, and three from this, something like that. Anyway, we're a little easier here. We just need to pick one from each group. How many possible combinations are there of, um, of subjects? So the way to think of this is, well, I can pick one, two, or three, three different combinations here. So I'm gonna multiply three by whatever I find over here. Three by however many combinations are here. And then if I were to start here, I'd say, well, one, two, three, four. I have four things to pick from, multiplied by whatever combination of stuff's here. Four by whatever combination of stuff's here. And there's five to pick from there. So that's how these work. Uh, often you'll just see in the book, it's three multiplied by four, multiplied by five. I like to show it this way. Uh, it's sort of more how you might learn. If you go and do computer science, it's more how you might think about things. Three times whatever's left. Four times whatever's left. Five times, well, there's only five. We get down to a nice simple thing. So then we put them back in. Five goes in, times four. The whole answer, five times, four times five, times three. Oh, uh, that's not finished, sorry. You need to actually multiply this out, put in a calculator. Four times five is 20, times three, 60. There's 60 possible uh, combinations here. Okay, for part two, the school is gonna add one extra subject. Um, where would we add the subject to make the number as big as possible? Okay, there's a, I guess there's two ways I'd like to think about this. Um, I'll show you the easy way first, the way that I, I'm guessing most students probably did this. Let's just try it. Let's, let's put a four in the first one. Four times, there'd be four now, and there'd be five. Uh, that would equal 80. Let's put the extra number in this one. So there's three times five times five, uh, that's 75. Put the extra number here. There's three times four times six, uh, what's that? 12 times six, uh, 72. So the, the place to put to make the biggest number is the first one, first group here. And um, how I'd like to think about that is, because uh, you know, sometimes the number's too big to try everything. Um, an extra number, where will uh, make the rest biggest? So I like to think of it like this, three times what's left there, uh, four times five, 20. Or four times, What's left? Three times five, 15. Or five times what's left? Uh, three times four, 12. So adding a number to the three would give us an extra 20. Adding a number to the four would give us an extra 15. Adding a number to the five would give us an extra 12. So adding the number to the three group is the best. It's the same thing we found here. So uh, that's, uh, that's the answer. Um, I think they want um, which group and then just explain or justify your answer with a bit of English. Showing this maths would be more than enough or showing this maths here would be plenty. Okay, I hope that helped. If you have any follow on questions, please let me know and uh, I'll do my best to answer. Thanks for watching and have a great day.